Imagine living in constant fear of assassination, surrounded by a web of secrets, lies and treachery. For Kim Jong-un, the supreme leader of North Korea, this is not just a nightmare scenario, it's a daily reality. Since taking power in 2011, Kim has reportedly survived at least 12 attempts on his life. These have included everything from poison plots to armed attacks and have originated from both within his own regime and from foreign adversaries. But how has Kim managed to stay alive in the face of such relentless danger? The answer lies in his vast and elaborate security apparatus, which includes everything from food tasters and armored vehicles to secret police and elite hackers. In this video, we'll take a deep dive into the shadowy world of Kim Jong-un's security, exploring the extreme measures he takes to protect himself from harm. From the fanatical loyalty of his bodyguards to the ruthless purges of his own officials, we'll examine the many layers of protection that surround the North Korean leader. Assassination Attempts Kim Jong-un, the supreme leader of North Korea, has reportedly survived at least 12 assassination attempts since taking power in 2011. Here are some of the most notable attempts on his life. In 2012, a North Korean army minister allegedly tried to blow up Kim with explosives hidden in a military building. The minister had reportedly become disaffected with Kim's rule and conspired with other military leaders to assassinate him. However, the plot was discovered by Kim's security forces before it could be carried out. The minister and his co-conspirators were promptly executed. In 2013, a North Korean citizen attempted to shoot Kim during a public event using a concealed firearm. The would-be assassin managed to get close to Kim, but was spotted by his bodyguards at the last moment. They quickly overpowered the attacker and shielded Kim from harm. The assassin was later executed by firing squad. In 2014, there was an attempt to poison Kim at a state banquet. The plot involved a high-ranking official who had access to Kim's food. The official allegedly laced Kim's meal with a slow-acting poison, hoping to make his death look like an illness. However, Kim's ever-vigilant food tasters detected the poison before he consumed it. The official behind the plot was caught and reportedly fed to a pack of hungry dogs. In 2015, a rogue North Korean Air Force unit attempted to shoot down Kim's private plane using anti-aircraft guns. The unit had reportedly become loyal to Kim's uncle, Jung song Taek, who was seen as a rival to Kim's power. The plan was to assassinate Kim as he flew back from a trip to Russia. However, Kim's security forces got wind of the plot and quickly moved to neutralize the threat. The members of the Air Force unit were arrested and later executed. In 2017, two North Korean agents allegedly attempted to use a biochemical substance to assassinate Kim while he attended a military parade. The agents had reportedly been trained by foreign intelligence services to carry out the attack. They managed to get close to Kim during the parade, but were spotted by his bodyguards who quickly intervened. The agents were captured and presumably executed, though details are scarce. These are just a few examples of the many attempts made on Kim Jong-un's life. Other alleged plots have involved snipers, drones, and even trained dolphins. However, thanks to his paranoid security measures and ruthless elimination of any potential threats, Kim has managed to survive them all, so far personal bodyguards. To protect himself from the constant threat of assassination, Kim Jong-un relies on a massive personal security force. This force is estimated to be around 90,000 strong, making it one of the largest in the world. Kim's bodyguards are carefully chosen from the most loyal and capable members of the Pyongyang elite. They undergo rigorous background checks and are constantly monitored for any signs of disloyalty or wavering commitment to the regime. The men directly responsible for guarding Kim's life are selected for their impressive physical attributes and combat skills. Like the bodyguards of Russian President Vladimir Putin, they tend to be fit, of similar height, around Kim's own stature, and trained extensively in martial arts and firearms usage. When on duty, Kim's bodyguards typically wear dark suits, white shirts and red ties, along with reflective sunglasses to conceal their eyes and add an air of mystique. They also wear earpieces to communicate with each other and stay apprised of any potential threats. Kim's most trusted guards are reportedly trained to literally jump in front of bullets or lay down their lives in other ways to protect him. 
They are said to pledge their loyalty to Kim above their own families and even the nation itself. In addition to his human shields, Kim also employs a number of other security measures to keep himself safe. He is known to travel with a portable toilet to prevent foreign intelligence services from collecting his excrement and analyzing it for health information. He also has a team of food tasters who sample every meal before he eats it to check for poison. Kim's personal security detail is led by his younger sister, Kim Yo Jong, who is one of his most trusted confidants. She oversees all aspects of his protection and is said to be fiercely loyal to her brother. Despite the many layers of security surrounding him, Kim Jong-un remains paranoid about the possibility of assassination. He rarely appears in public without his bodyguards close at hand, and he is known to take extreme precautions when traveling outside of North Korea. For example, during a 2019 summit with US President Donald Trump in Vietnam, Kim took a 60-hour train journey through China rather than fly, presumably to avoid any potential aerial attacks. As long as Kim remains in power, it is likely that he will continue to invest heavily in his personal security, viewing it as essential to his survival in the cutthroat world of North Korean politics. Public Events Security Whenever Kim Jong-un appears in public, his security team takes extreme measures to ensure his safety. Any event he attends is meticulously planned and heavily guarded to minimize the risk of assassination. Before Kim arrives at a venue, his bodyguards and other security personnel conduct a thorough sweep of the area. They search for any suspicious items or people, and they secure all entrances and exits. They also set up multiple perimeters around the location, with each layer of security more heavily guarded than the last. Once the area is deemed secure, Kim's personal bodyguards take up positions surrounding him. They form a tight ring around the North Korean leader, scanning the crowd for any potential threats. Additional guards are positioned at strategic locations throughout the venue, ready to respond to any incidents. Kim's security team is known to be very aggressive in their protection efforts. They have been seen physically pushing and shoving people out of Kim's path, and they are not afraid to use force to neutralize any perceived threats. In addition to his bodyguards, Kim is also protected by a heavily armed military presence at public events. Soldiers equipped with automatic weapons and other heavy weaponry are often stationed around the perimeter of the venue, ready to respond to any attacks. Snipers are also a common sight at events attended by Kim. These highly trained marksmen take up positions on rooftops and other high vantage points, scanning the area for any signs of danger. They are reportedly authorized to shoot to kill if they perceive a threat to Kim's life. To further ensure Kim's safety, his security team employs a number of high-tech gadgets and devices. These include drone jammers to prevent any unauthorized aerial surveillance or attacks, as well as advanced sensors and scanners to detect any hidden weapons or explosives. Kim's security team also makes use of body doubles to confuse potential assassins. These lookalikes are carefully selected and trained to mimic Kim's mannerisms and appearance, making it difficult for would-be attackers to identify the real target. Despite all of these measures, Kim's appearances at public events are still considered high-risk operations. His security team remains on high alert throughout, knowing that even a momentary lapse in vigilance could prove fatal for the North Korean leader. Yet even with the constant threat of assassination hanging over him, Kim Jong-un continues to make public appearances and attend events. For him, being seen by his people is an essential part of maintaining his grip on power and projecting an image of strength and invincibility. No matter the risk, Kim seems determined to remain a visible presence in North Korean society, albeit one that is always surrounded by a phalanx of heavily armed guards. Transportation Security when it comes to transportation, Kim Jong-un spares no expense to ensure his safety and security. He is known to travel in a fleet of armored vehicles that are among the most advanced and heavily protected in the world. Kim's primary mode of transport is a customized Mercedes-Benz S 600 Pullman Guard limousine. This massive vehicle is estimated to cost around $1.6 million and is equipped with a range of high-tech security features. The limousine's body is made of reinforced steel and bulletproof glass, making it virtually impenetrable to most weapons. 
It is also sealed against chemical and biological attacks and equipped with an independent air supply to protect against poisonous gases. Inside, the limousine is fitted with state-of-the-art communications equipment, allowing Kim to stay in constant contact with his security team and other officials. It also reportedly has a number of luxurious amenities, including reclining seats, a refrigerator, and a flat-screen television. When traveling in his limousine, Kim is always accompanied by a convoy of nearly identical vehicles. This is done to confuse any potential attackers and make it difficult for them to identify which car Kim is actually in. The other vehicles in Kim's convoy are typically filled with heavily armed bodyguards and security personnel. They are trained to respond quickly to any threats and to shield Kim's limousine with their own vehicles if necessary. In addition to his ground transportation, Kim also has access to a fleet of private jets and helicopters. These aircraft are heavily modified with the latest security features and are always accompanied by fighter jets or attack helicopters for added protection. When flying, Kim typically travels with a large entourage of bodyguards and other support staff. His planes are equipped with advanced countermeasures to defeat any potential missile attacks, and they are capable of flying at high altitudes to avoid ground-based threats. Even with all of these precautions, Kim is still extremely cautious when it comes to transportation. He often takes circuitous routes to his destinations to throw off any would-be attackers, and he is known to switch vehicles at a moment's notice if he feels threatened. Kim's paranoia about transportation security is not unfounded. In 2017, his half-brother Kim Jong-nam was assassinated with a nerve agent at an airport in Malaysia, highlighting the dangers faced by high-profile North Korean officials when traveling abroad. As a result, Kim Jong-un's trips outside of North Korea are relatively rare and heavily guarded affairs. When he does travel internationally, such as to summits with foreign leaders, his security team works closely with local authorities to ensure his safety at every step of the journey. Despite the risks, Kim Jong-un's use of heavily armored vehicles and aircraft is seen as a symbol of his power and prestige within North Korea. His fleet of luxury cars and planes is a visible reminder of his status as the supreme leader of the country and a warning to any who might challenge his rule. Food tasters and medical personnel one of the most unusual aspects of Kim Jong-un's security detail is his use of food tasters and medical personnel to protect him from poisoning and other health threats. According to defectors and intelligence reports, Kim employs a team of carefully vetted individuals whose sole job is to taste his food before he eats it. These food tasters are reportedly trained to detect even the slightest hint of poison or contamination in Kim's meals. The tasters are said to work in teams, with each member assigned to a specific dish or type of food. They take small bites of each item and wait for any signs of adverse reactions before giving the all clear for Kim to eat. In addition to the food tasters, Kim also has a dedicated medical team that monitors his health around the clock. This team includes doctors, nurses and other healthcare professionals who are tasked with keeping the North Korean leader in top physical condition. Kim's medical team is reportedly equipped with the latest medical technology and has access to a wide range of medications and treatments. They are said to conduct regular checkups on Kim and provide him with customized health plans to maintain his well-being. The use of food tasters and medical personnel is not unique to Kim Jong-un. Many high-profile leaders throughout history have employed similar measures to protect themselves from assassination attempts. However, Kim's paranoia about poisoning and other health threats is said to be particularly acute. He is reportedly obsessed with maintaining his health and appearance and is willing to go to great lengths to protect himself from any potential harm. This obsession has led to some bizarre and extreme measures. For example, Kim is said to have had his own aunt killed for attempting to poison him, although the details of this incident are murky and difficult to verify. Kim's use of food tasters and medical personnel is also seen as a reflection of the broader culture of fear and paranoia that pervades North Korean society. In a country where even the slightest hint of disloyalty can be punished with death, Kim's inner circle is under constant pressure to protect him at all costs. Some experts have suggested that Kim's reliance on food tasters and medical personnel may actually be a sign of his own insecurity and vulnerability. 
By surrounding himself with individuals whose sole purpose is to keep him alive, Kim may be betraying a deep-seated fear of his own mortality. Regardless of the reasons behind it, Kim Jong-un's use of food tasters and medical personnel is a striking example of the lengths to which he will go to protect himself from harm. It is a reminder of the constant threat of assassination that hangs over his head and the extreme measures he is willing to take to stay in power. Surveillance and Countermeasures In addition to his physical security measures, Kim Jong-un also relies on a vast network of surveillance and countermeasures to protect himself from potential threats. North Korea is known to have one of the most extensive and intrusive surveillance systems in the world. The country's intelligence agencies monitor the activities of citizens and foreigners alike, using a combination of human informants, electronic eavesdropping, and other methods. This surveillance network is particularly focused on the activities of high-ranking officials and members of the ruling elite. Kim's security team is said to closely monitor the communications and movements of anyone who comes into contact with the North Korean leader, looking for any signs of disloyalty or potential threats. To aid in this effort, Kim is said to have access to a range of advanced surveillance technologies. These include state-of-the-art cameras and audio recording devices, as well as sophisticated hacking tools and other electronic countermeasures. One of the most notable examples of Kim's surveillance capabilities is his use of satellite tracking to monitor the movements of his own officials. According to defectors and intelligence reports, Kim's security team uses GPS trackers and other devices to keep tabs on the whereabouts of high-ranking members of the regime, ensuring that they do not stray too far from Pyongyang or engage in any suspicious activities. Kim is also said to employ a network of hackers and cybersecurity experts to protect his own communications and data. These individuals are tasked with preventing any unauthorized access to Kim's personal devices and networks, as well as identifying and neutralizing any potential cyber threats. In addition to these defensive measures, Kim's security team is also known to engage in offensive countermeasures against potential threats. This can include everything from disinformation campaigns to sabotage and even assassination of individuals who are seen as a danger to the regime. One of the most notorious examples of this occurred in 2017 when Kim's half-brother Kim Jong-nam was assassinated with a nerve agent in Malaysia. The attack was widely believed to have been carried out by North Korean agents, although the regime has denied any involvement. Kim's use of surveillance and countermeasures is not limited to his own country. North Korea is known to have an extensive network of spies and informants operating in countries around the world, gathering intelligence and carrying out covert operations on behalf of the regime. This has led to a growing sense of paranoia and unease among many foreign governments and intelligence agencies. In recent years, there have been numerous reports of North Korean agents attempting to infiltrate foreign countries and organizations, often using sophisticated methods such as cyber attacks and social engineering, loyalty tests and purges. One of the most disturbing aspects of Kim Jong-un's security apparatus is his use of loyalty tests and purges to eliminate potential threats to his rule. Throughout his tenure as North Korea's leader, Kim has demonstrated a ruthless willingness to eliminate anyone who he perceives as a challenge to his authority. This has included high-ranking members of his own family, as well as senior officials within the military and government. Kim's loyalty tests take many forms, but they often involve forcing individuals to prove their allegiance to the regime through extreme or humiliating acts. For example, officials may be required to publicly denounce their own family members or engage in self-criticism sessions where they admit to various failings and pledge their undying loyalty to Kim. Those who fail these tests or who are suspected of disloyalty can face severe consequences. In some cases, they may be demoted or reassigned to less prestigious positions within the government or military. In more serious cases, they may be sent to prison camps or even executed. One of the most high-profile examples of Kim's use of purges occurred in 2013 when he had his own uncle, Jiang Songtek, arrested and executed. Jiang, who had been a close advisor to Kim's father, Kim Jong-il, was accused of treason and corruption and was reportedly fed to hungry dogs as punishment. Since then, 
Kim has carried out numerous other purges and executions of high-ranking officials. In 2015, he had his defense minister Hyun Yong Chol executed with an anti-aircraft gun for falling asleep during a meeting. In 2016, he had his deputy premier Kim Yong Jin executed for disrespectful posture during a meeting. These purges are not limited to individuals, but can also target entire institutions or branches of the government. In recent years, Kim has reportedly carried out a major restructuring of the military, replacing many senior officers with younger, more loyal officials. The constant threat of purges and loyalty tests creates a climate of fear and paranoia within the North Korean elite. Officials are under constant pressure to demonstrate their allegiance to Kim, and even the slightest hint of disloyalty can be enough to trigger a purge. This has led to a culture of sycophancy and flattery within the regime, with officials competing to outdo each other in their public displays of devotion to Kim. It has also made it difficult for Kim to receive accurate information and advice, as officials are often too afraid to speak honestly about potential problems or challenges facing the country. Despite the effectiveness of these methods in maintaining Kim's grip on power, they also carry significant risks. The constant turnover of officials and the lack of institutional knowledge can make it difficult for the government to function effectively, while the climate of fear can stifle innovation and creativity.